Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. I'm coming at you today from, I think the name is Paraguay de Cristo, su Isitado. I'm not sure exactly what that means in Spanish, but anyways, I'm in Cancun, Mexico in a nice little church courtyard here and, I'm, and I apologize for the noise there's a there's a very heavy street right next to the church anyways let's get into the message today I want to talk to you guys about putting the brethren first putting the brothers first okay the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 38 through 48 ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whoever shall compel thee to go one mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, Turn unto thou away, or excuse me, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send it rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even publicans, even, do not even the publicans do so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Word of the Lord. Now, part of my message that I want to talk to you today about is putting the brothers first. And if you focus in on um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 47, Jesus says, If you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do the same? See, everybody, including myself, we're so, always so focused on ourselves and our own house and our own belongings and our own lives you know every man wants a woman because no house is a home without a woman to be your wife and to be your homemaker you know to make your to turn your house into a home you know in fact the bible says in deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 5 when a man hath taken a new wife he shall not go out to war neither shall he be charged with any business but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife that he hath taken. See, the Bible says you're not even allowed to go to war or have any kind of business for the first year of your marriage. Why? Because it's very important. God says it's very important to keep, um, to create a home first and establish that. So the point is, do not put the cart before the horse. Do not put the cart before the horse. We all want a virtuous woman, right? To have a good wife at home. But sometimes we're so busy out there looking for a woman that we neglect our brethren. We neglect our own uh, friends and family. While I'm out here in Cancun, Mexico, um, it's the same as back in the States. Uh, all the guys here are focused on women, you know? At the beach and in the bars and, and everywhere you go. Think about the way the world does things. Men are always trying to impress women and women are always trying to make themselves attractive to men. But women forget to boast up their sisters and us men, we forget to lift up our brothers like we should. Now don't get me wrong, a wife is a wonderful asset and ought to be sought after but think of a chessboard. Okay, you ever play the game of chess? 
You are like the king. Now, you're the most important piece in, in your kingdom, right? On the chessboard. You lose the king, game's over. But what other pieces do you have? You have your castle, which is like your house. Uh, um, you know, like I said, you know, you have your house, the place you live at, the place you lay your head at at night. Then you have your horses, which are like your work tools or your car or things that make you money. Um, I call them horses. I think uh, you can call them knights. In the game of chess, they're called knights. And then you have your um, your bishops, uh, which are like could be like your counselors or your advisors or people uh, that are your um, elders maybe that you go to for wisdom and guidance and try to guide you the right way. And then, of course, you have your pawns. You have all your pawns on the chessboard. Uh, these are the pieces that you have the most of, um, which I liken them to, like, your friends or, or your relatives or your coworkers or your neighbors, you know, people that you see all the time and, and you're close with and you talk to them. And then you just have one other piece on the chessboard, the queen. Now, she, granted, she's a very high-value high value piece, it's just one piece on the board, okay? And many a games have been won without the queen. You know, although it's a, it's a powerful piece and an important piece, it's not a necessary piece to win the game, you see? I remind you of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 27, which says, Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. Okay, see? So, so if you don't have this piece, if you don't have a wife, you should be focusing on your other pieces, making sure those pieces are taken care of, developing them, and things like this. Think about it. Instead of worrying so much that, oh, I don't have a queen, I don't have a queen. Instead, if you focus on helping out your brethren, helping out your fellow pawns, focusing on the, the things that you do have, because think about it, if you focus on your pawns and you help one of your pawns get to the other side of the board, what happens? Well, that pawn can turn into just something some, just as valuable as the queen. It can turn into a piece just as powerful as the queen. So we need to focus on our brethren, you understand? Because the publicans, the rest of the world, most people, they're so focused on this one piece, obtaining this one piece, this queen, that they neglect to all the other pieces on their board. You know, the other pieces, they forget to develop them there because they're so focused on obtaining the queen. So we need to work with what we got, guys. We need to invest in our brothers, invest in the brethren. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, he said, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto me, one of the least of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. See, in our society, it's common to approach women, to give attention to a woman. Um, but what do we see the publicans doing? What do we see the majority of people doing? They go out and seek a wife. They're looking at the women. They're trying to get the women, right? But how many times have you approached a man? As many times as you approached a woman to help them out, right? How many times have you seen a woman stranded on the side of the road and you, and you sought to help her out instead of helping your brother stranded on the side of the road? You see what I'm saying? Proverbs 18.24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. How did Jesus have so many friends? You know, I make a joke sometimes that, uh, you know... <laughs> The, uh, one of the miracles of Jesus is he had 12 really close friends at the age of 32, or at the, you know, at the age of 30, um, which is, a, you know, it's a joke, but, but seriously, you know, how did he have so many friends? Because he put others before himself. He fed the flock. He cared about the brothers, right? The brotherhood is important. He was more interested in how could he help his neighbor more than how could he feed his own belly and how can he improve his own um, material gain, right? See, you have more pawns on the chessboard than any other piece in the board. So that ought to keep you really busy if you just focus on developing your pawns, right? You say, well, 
I I'm all out of pawns, Sean. You know, I turn all my friends against me. Well, okay, go ahead and make some new friends. Okay, you say, well, I don't know how. Well, it's okay. Uh, maybe you think you're too shy or whatever. Well, Jesus told us how. Let me, let me share this with you. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, the Bible says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. You want somebody to buy you lunch? Go buy them lunch, you know? And, and, and for my ladies, you want a man to tell you you're pretty? Well, go tell them they're handsome. You know what I mean? Fellas, you want a woman to cook for you? Well, go cook for them. Remember, you reap what you sow. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. See, I believe that. I believe that what goes around comes back around to you. Um, Jesus said, In so much as ye have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, you have also done it unto me. You see, do it for Jesus, you know. You'll be closer with Christ. You'll be in the yoke with Christ when you're helping the brethren, when you're helping your fellow men. And the Holy Spirit will fill you with joy and happiness. Even, even the publicans, uh, you know, they'll buy lunch for their best friends. They'll buy lunch. They'll buy a drink for a pretty woman, right? But how many men do you see how, uh, who will buy a drink, who will, who will help out their enemies, who will help out their neighbors? who will help out their brothers or help out somebody that, you know, maybe that, uh, that doesn't like you very much, right? You know what I'm saying? So I challenge you, brothers, um, to be ye, the Bible says, be ye separate, you know? So uh, the Bible says God wants us to be a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And, and nothing's more pleasing to God than when brothers are helping each other out, our sisters are helping each other out, you know what I mean? So I challenge you, brothers, to do a good deed this week. You know, do it for God and, and try to make it a habit, you know. Focus on helping your brothers out. Encourage the young boys, the younger men to uh, set a good example for them. Ask, ask them, how could you be a service to them? You know, ask yourself, hey, what can I do to help encourage my brothers, to help lift them up to a new level, you know, to a higher level. And even better is if you do a good service without having to be told, right? Is if you do some do somebody a service, and with that without them even telling you um, what you could do for them, like um, I don't know, like maybe you go, maybe you know that your neighbor uh, uh, likes his, um, I don't know, I, I don't want to give an example of this, uh, but you know, maybe you know somebody who, uh, who likes their coffee a certain way, or likes a particular coffee, and maybe one day you just buy them a coffee, a, a cup of coffee, I don't know, something simple, you know. It could be as simple as smiling at somebody uh, walking down the street, you know, smiling at a brother. You know, that's impressive. And remember, in all things, give glory to God. Give glory, give glory to God. See, I'm out here in Cancun, Mexico, and, and there's a lot to be thankful for and, and a lot of things that I could say, oh, man, well, I, I, I did this and this to get here, you know, but you know what? At the end of the day, I give all the glory to God because... If it weren't for God, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to be here. I wouldn't be able to be preaching to you guys right now. But He has put breath in my lungs. He has taught me things that He wants me to share with you guys. So that's why I'm trying to get you guys this message. Stop focusing so much on yourselves, and and, and especially stop focusing so much on the women. You know, help the brothers out. Help the brethren. We need to be helping the brethren. Anyway, that's my message, guys. I don't want to make this video too long because um, I do want to get out here and see some more of Mexico while I'm still here. But I just, I wanted to share this with you guys. And I love you guys and I pray God blesses all of you guys, you know, and, and hopefully that you get a chance to come out here to Mexico or, or anywhere you want to travel in the world. You know, I hope you get a chance to do that. I hope God, God grants you the privilege to do that. But no matter where you're at in the world, you can always help your brothers. You know, I'm out here. Sometimes I can't speak the same language as these people here, you know. And like I said, you could always smile. How you treat people, how you act uh, towards people, how you present yourself to people, how you look at them. You know, it all matters, you know. Anyway, that's my message, guys. Um, until next time, I'm going to give God the last word as usual. But uh, 
I love you guys and uh, pray for me to have a safe trip back home and I'll be praying for you guys too that God blesses you with more wisdom and um, more blessings. God bless you. Have a nice day. Um, the uh, closing verse I'm going to use is John chapter 13 verse 12 through 17 which says, So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Amen.